Hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Bob. And I'm Dan. And this is a board game rundown. Today we are going to review Destinies by Lucky Duck Games. So Destinies is not a co-op. No. Uh, no. Whoops. Yeah, we thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was. Nope, uh, not but so much. in this game, each player is trying to fulfill their own destiny. You're going to have like one of two paths. Usually it's like a light path and a dark path, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can actually progress al along both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to decide which one to activate. Uh, at the end, right? right? Or by just by choosing your actions right. or whatever. Uh, and plus, as you ask people about them, depending on which which code you scan, you'll get clues. They'll, they'll tell you like, hey, go see the smith. Go see the innkeeper. Mm -hmm. Go talk to that guy. Uh, yeah. And then so like some games like Seventh Continent, like the the map could we've just got stuff out for demonstration. So this is not spoilery, but like the map will show up. You know, maybe you don't know what's all around you. And then as you explore places, it'll come out and then the app's going to tell you mm -hmm. to do this. So, by the way, this is an app driven game. You must have the app, the app. Yep. Uh, and it, the app will just basically run on one device. Yep. Uh, some games you can sync the Multiple app devices to the game. This is not one Correct. of those. Uh, it's also we didn't say yet one to three players, one which is to kind of which weird odd player count. Yeah, but but it, but it did kept it going. Like it I never played like really waited, well yeah. for one to three. Yeah, players. there was yeah. a there was like one time in, and I'm not complaining at all. Like Bob was looking up some on his phone because I was buying some. <laughs> also true, but it was like real quick. Yeah. I mean, it's like oh, hey, Bob, it's your turn already. Yeah, because uh, oh shoot, yeah. yeah. So I mean. Th that's a good thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Little, there was very little downtime. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of like when you're doing other like story-driven games. If one person is kind of running the app, maybe the other person is right. running the deck of cards. Everybody's yeah. got something to do, yeah, right? right. Yeah. Games All, like XCOM have to try really hard to accomplish that, and this mm -hmm. game did fine. Yeah, yeah it felt did, good. did pretty easily. Uh, this has a uh, some really nice player boards. Yep. I, uh, dual layered. Dual like layered. That. And then this system here really impressed me. Yeah, I enjoyed that. So there's like basically you've got four different... Pieces. Three to four, depending on. What oh your yeah, three are. to four, depending. Yep. But you will gain uh, as you roll dice. You add them together, and then for each one of these like brown little wooden bits Tips that you pass. that you uh, meet or meet or exceed, uh, that's a success. Mm -hmm. And you can ex expend uh, effort dice to roll, and you it'll add Adds either to extra. your total or it could just be a guaranteed success. Yep. And that system I thought was really neat. Yeah. Right. Uh, Instead of being like, oh, so you get a success for every five or six, you get, no, no, I'm getting better at these skills. So now even though I rolled a six this time, it was only two last time, a six this time could be three successes because right. I improved on that skill. Right. And so this having a four here would be one success on blue, but two successes on green. And then yeah, you would mm -hmm. add this together and you would type in that amount of successes into the app. Pop it in the mm -hmm. app. It's going to tell you what happens. Yep. The really neat thing that I, that I liked was that it looked like even when you failed, uh, it would give you an experience, mm -hmm. which you could spend on your turn to basically move up uh, to improve and to to improve attributes to improve an attribute twice. Correct. So basically, you could do one thing two times. You could move split and make this lower and this lower, mm -hmm. or you could split it up and do one up here and one down there. Yep. I really like that system. That yeah. system is incredibly simple and yet unique. Yeah. You know, I, yes. liked, I liked that system quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes a second to get used to at the beginning because it says, like, increase your skill, uh, which yeah. is a bad thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, Making yeah. it go up is bad because right. it's harder to than get to get there. And it'll have the indicator, right, whether to move it to the right, right. or to the left. Yeah. Right. right. So it doesn't actually technically say increase or decrease, I think, yeah. but usually when it points to the right, your brain thinks to increase it up the right. yeah. up the track. And again, and that's I, bad. And I would recommend using a tablet if you have one because it makes it a little bit bigger and the icons are a little bit bigger. On a phone, it might be tricky to that's see. That's true. Even on the tablet, the, the icons were pretty small. Yeah. I didn't have a he problem. Had, he had a mini. He had, I think, yeah. It was yeah, so a little small. But this would be like, if you have, uh, if you can screen share to like your that'd TV or a monitor, yeah, it'd look that'd be great. Really nice. Yeah. Like we've had some good experiences mm -hmm. with that in other games uh, yeah. that are app driven. Yep. And this would this would benefit. Uh, and it adds great like ambiance too, right? Like you go to the Smith and you're like ting ting. Yeah. Right. The there was a little. There was a couple times where the music got really loud randomly or really sure. quiet randomly. The sound. Um, yeah. So yeah. Be ready for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there were five scenarios. There are five, in, yes. In the base game. The, the base first game. one is basically a standalone, mm -hmm. and that lets you just kind of get a feel for stuff, right? But it never felt too basic, I don't no, think. I feel, yeah. no. And then uh, the way the story's intertwined, like all three really of neat. us doing our quest and seeing, like, why are you going over there, Bob? That's, yeah. uh, that's hurt me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, why are you like, doing that? Yeah. that? That's very cool, very mm -hmm. interesting. And I mean, look at all the map tiles all the map here. Tiles. Yeah. 
that uh, that go into it, and mm-hmm. all these. I don't even know if you can see these. All these item decks here. Yeah. Uh, lots of repeats. Don't get me wrong, because sure. you know we don't want Bob to get the only crossbow in the game or something. Right. right? Yeah. But right. sorry, there's only one rope here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But sure. uh, but just item decks and. Mm-hmm. Ah oh, man, encounter. These are little encounter symbols yep. on the thing, and of course the app. Again, these just look like this here, but on the app it will say it like what you know, is. yeah, blacksmith yeah, maybe over the, that or something. Yeah, the church. The so you can yeah. tap, yeah. and then you tap that, and it's going to give you a list of options mm-hmm. of what you can do. So before we get off track too far, the other four camp, the other oh, yeah. four missions are make up one full campaign to play in order. Okay. Um, nice. I'm hoping with that one because in, in this game. we didn't pick our characters, right? It assigned right. them. Correct. I assume in the campaign one you choose because there were a lot more characters. Lot characters. <laughs> There's so. a ton of characters, yep. and, you, and it may still limit you to a few options. Yeah, in sure. Bits of it or whatever. But yeah, for the most part, like on the first one, you open it up and there's three characters. Like we picked a three player game. There's three characters. Right. So if I hope pick, it's a little more lenient. Than if that you pick a one player game, it, it might change the story if you go to play this solo because mm-hmm. uh, there's different options in the uh, in the app. Okay. And it looked like there was even a two v two mode, Ooh. which is weird. That's yeah, a, I did see that. How could it be that if it's a three player? Uh, game? Well, we yeah. didn't get into it. Yeah, but, yeah, but I didn't see it's a two v two. But it is there. Yeah, they had an option for it. I say, while he's looking that up, I'm a big fan of this art design where it's like you get that the fog of war. You kind of know it's over there because you've mm-hmm. heard people talk about it or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then when you do flip it over, it fleshes it out more. It's it's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. And it, all it does the add stuff sometimes up. though. Yeah. Bound it's, by fate, two v two. I really, I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like I've played a lot of like the you know Warcraft and whatnot. Online. You do have a slight fog of war. You can kind of tell like oh there's a mountain there, right? This and that you can see the tree in the distance. And then when you actually show up and it goes away. Well, and yeah, and like the detail. little hints you were hinting at a second ago, where you might go to this tile, mm-hmm. and then someone you, when you walk there, it has a little sentence that might say like you hear howling to the west, and that yeah. gives you a hint of what's on this tile as yeah, well. Yeah. While walking into this one, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Uh, I love. So this. it looks like each player plays two handed. Oh, okay. So you've got like, so, uh, you're like four so your players. dude will have like a henchman or a oh, okay. herbalist that yeah. follows you around, okay. something like that, or live bait. Yeah. Or live bait. <laughs> well, more <laughs> options to a two-player version of the game then, yeah. I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Like one of my biggest complaints I have about the art design though would be like all these minis kind of look like sure they all like have different poses and they are somewhat different. Uh, at times, it was tough to tell which ones were the player models. Mm-hmm. There's no little things to put on the bottom. Yeah, you usually a, a game would make the NPCs gray and the player models tan. Well, but yeah, here's the problem. Like differentiation. Is that like, let's just say we visited the fortune teller, right? Uh, well, maybe the fortune teller is a playable character. Sure. Maybe. Well, then, but then you could at least then make like, you know, they have those caps for the normal size minis. Make right. Small exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, the small Right, exactly. No, I, I agree with yeah, you, but I'm just saying that's easier. why I'm guessing that's why they don't differentiate. Yeah, in the no, the, the color, color for the sure. On the be. mini itself. But there's a ton of little minis. I don't know if you're going to pull this tray over there's here. There's a ton of big Yeah, let's show that insert here. anyway. Yeah, let's show this insert. It's really nice. I mean, you can see like all these minis. Yeah, there's a ton of this big crazy guy. Things in there. This big dude's crazy, pretty crazy. Guy. Yeah, I mean, it's just there's and then good all the stuff. little people, all the little and people, all the little, little people. Yeah, the little people. Yeah, that's, that looks like a really nice insert. And like you know, it's got the plastic thing that goes to the top that holds everything in place. Right, and this is just base game. We don't have the Kickstarter. Yeah, nothing special, exclusive on this or nothing. This is what you get off the. St- While the you're talking about that, I'll mention also I liked the rule book. Um, okay, I haven't a chance to look uh, at yeah, it. Yeah, I only skimmed through it. Tim actually mm-hmm. kind of taught the game, but I skimmed through it. There was a couple things while we were playing. I just wanted to double check for my own character, mm-hmm. and I was able to find it easily and uh, and get that. So I don't know if it's amazing or not, but it's definitely not terrible because I, I, mean, I found the stuff. Honestly, sure. it's it's like you're gonna do three things on your turn. You start your turn. Yep, That's I love thing that. One, yeah. Which basically is like you're gonna <laughs> usually get, get a die, die. gain yeah. a you're and gonna there's gain a couple items. Die. Yeah, it's at the start of your turn. It's almost like upkeep. Yeah, right, right, right. Like right. And then you can yeah. move up to two spaces unless you have something that allows you to do move more. more. Yeah. And then you are going to interact with the location you're at. You. Yep. Yep. And, and usually one interaction. Per nice. turn, you just right. talk to someone. It'll say end your turn. When so you're done. the only thing, my my complaint about that was there was one point where Dan's like, "Oh, I'm going to this place," and I clicked on it, and then he's oh. like, "Oh wait, that's not the place I thought it was." Right. And there was no, no way to no, no undo back button in yeah. no yeah. undo, undo button. would be nice if you hit it accidentally hit the wrong thing. And then yeah. the other thing that was tough was when we we were setting up the game and like it it'll tell you in the app like the noble put these. Put your bits all like lined up here, you know, mm. four, four, five, one, you know, whatever. Well, I bumped my thing and my pieces moved. Well, then I couldn't 
there was no way to go back and right. see what my stats were. So you had to ones. relaunch the game so, on a so different I, phone. So I opened up my phone, brought up the scenario, and just went to that. Yeah. So that was kind of a negative was that I didn't have a way once in the right. game to, so to check starting. my starting stats. Mm-hmm. So two things on that. Either if the starting stats for the character is always the same, why aren't there little player cards that just tell yeah, us where starting card or stats somewhere are? In the book where it's got yeah, all that's listed. super easy. If they change depending on scenario, I okay. understand that. Yeah, then. true. I, I, I get that. But then you should be able to maybe check starting equipment or something. Right. Have a there like, should still be, of course, a, a way to check it. To start that's a nitpick. Yeah, but it's pretty small. It was inconvenient. Yeah. Not the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, guys, uh, components, right? Components uh, yeah. are super happy. The yeah. only thing for components for me is the the bases. Yep. Right. right. I, I agree with that. I, I, I agree with this that. This is all great. The dice look good, Easy right? To They're read. different. Yep. Easy um, to read. I like nice I like these thick. things here, right? So like sometimes you go into there's a Smith somewhere or there's this other store somewhere, and so you would put a little icon next to them, and then like on there because they would each create their own like item decks that are for sale, right? And then so you that reflects put, yeah, so that way you know what deck goes to where instead of having to have it like on the map or yep. just kind of anywhere else. So yeah, it, yep. Thank you, designers, for understanding the problems we face in board games. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so they solved a lot of the things that we do encounter, but then they kind of left a couple of things. That yeah, were, sure. And that might have been a cost. Thing too, right? Getting sure. tiny rings. Yeah, sure. see, I don't know how that, that could have been too much. Couple of cents to get those mass produced, you know. It just might there. have been tough fitting them. I don't know. That could have been true too. Like it's it, you know making something that small, you know, that you can the, pry off. Because I would be worried that you would break the these. break that off. Yeah, yeah, fairly. Easily. I guess the last thing I'll mention uh, is you'll see that pretty much every card has a QR code on it, and that's because yep. you can interact with things in the app, right? It'll yep. say uh, offer offer something. a good or ask them about an item, and mm-hmm. you just flash Hold your card up. to the app, and it, it it gives you information that it can or, or anything yep. like that. Super right. useful. Super cool. But yeah, I don't think there's anything else to say about components. You guys can see yeah. it. They're, yeah. I mean, they're nice. They're solid. I'm a fan of metal coins, but these are just nice, fine. Nice, chonky. You know? Yeah, they are chonky. The punch, the punch outs are chonky. They yeah. are very chonky. Yep. And, uh, you know, these could be thicker, but I just don't care. Yeah, they're fine. I, they're, they're totally fine. fine. Yeah, they do what they're supposed exactly. to do. Exactly. Well, yeah. I think that's and that allows you to have a bunch... Yeah, a lot more of them. Yeah. So yeah, many here saving. again. It's a nice yeah. This is saver. so nice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, component component yeah, wise, really good. Very seven. easy to learn. Like the learning curve was very quick. Yeah, I had read the book a few times, and I'm like, well, I mean, this is really. That's it. Like the only thing was uh, making sure I understood how the skill checks worked. Right. And other than that, everything else just kind of tells you. Well, yeah. Just tells you what to do. Mm-hmm. You know, more or less. Yeah. I was very impressed. I would describe. I said it kind of earlier, but I would describe the game as like simple and clever. It it it's it's easy to learn, but it's also it has these mechanics where like there were multiple times where stuff would happen. We go like, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we just like liked how something worked or how, how they. And then how they different. Came up with an idea. The other thing I liked is that different characters interact with the different with people differently. Yeah, with the different mm-hmm. players differently. Yeah. So like was, there was I a priest addresses a witch differently than he addresses a noble or a huntsman. Right. Yeah. I was very I was, was not really expecting cool. them to go that far. And right, like right. we could tell in the text they were like this knows it's talking to the witch right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, very cool. Yeah, yeah it was, oh, it was Yeah, yeah, it was neat how they I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, right. it was cool that they interacted just things like that mm-hmm. worked the way they did. It's right? not just like the standard NPC. Hello, welcome to my store. Would you like to buy an item? You know, it was I would like to, to purchase you. some skooma, please. Yes. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so yeah, uh, as far as availability, you can, I mean, this is on the store in the shop that we yeah. hang out at yeah, right now. It's pretty easily like, or It's on the shelf, you know, so mm-hmm. I, I think it's not too hard to get. Yeah. I think it's pretty reasonable. Price yeah. Too. Price point's pretty average, yeah. right? Right around the $50 I, range. I was impressed with what you're getting here with the price point yeah. compared to s- games that do similar things. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, cause you could buy a fantasy flight like descent, uh, or, uh, uh, uh Imperial assault. Style game, right? Comes with a campaign, yeah, a bunch of a minis, bunch of little minis, uh, yeah, tiles, app driven. cards, app driven, and you're, and you're like almost 100 bucks, bucks yeah. right? So mm-hmm. this is half the price. Now the minis are smaller, and right. you're not getting that IP. Right, not right. the descent is specifically sure, an IP, right. but that's I again. I think that's a positive to this because the table space that this game takes up is beautiful for yeah. what you're getting this map design and the, the if the minis were bigger they'd look weird but they they yeah, look they, like they, they're they part of the map yeah. you know they're the i know i was size. even doing that i was like yeah no it all it all works out pretty good man mm-hmm. it all works out pretty good yeah. okay so let's uh we're gonna give it a rating, Dan. Yeah. How does our rating system so work? So we are three people, but three ratings would be useless. So instead, we'll each give a rating, and then we will 
average it together so that the board game rundown has one rating that will go on board game geek and stuff so that when you look up our rating all you have to worry about is what did they give it as a group not what did tim give it and dan give it so right. yes because uh, we're buffoons we are yeah, buffoons and so or anyway, tell you. i've been <laughs> looking for a game to do this kind of thing for a while i've had my eye on seven continent you know uh-huh. you guys talk a lot about tainted grail yep. i've been mm-hmm. looking for a game i like i know it's not like this but i like betrayal i like mm-hmm. that kind of system exploring, building yeah kinda. exploring and stuff mm-hmm. i've been looking for a game that does this for a while and this game does it extremely well. Uh-huh. I liked this a lot. I, I, when Tim first brought it, I was like, I don't know what that is. And he kept saying, like, we need to play this. And I was like, yeah, we'll play it eventually. And then literally, like, two days ago, I was just on Google or something, and something for this came up, and I clicked on it, and instantly I was like, this game looks amazing. <laughs> so I'm so glad we played it. I enjoyed this immensely. So it didn't disappoint. It, it lived up to the hype. It lived up to the hype nice. of the one picture I looked at. Nice. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, so I'm going to repeat myself as uh, – I, I actually gave one of these out recently. This is not super often for me. I'm giving this game a nine. Yeah, you're uh, usually the I, wet blanket yeah, on our, yeah. uh, happy party. And uh, <laughs> I gave another game a nine recently, and I can't believe I'm giving a second one this soon. And, yeah, and the, I it's could completely see, different than the other I could game, see yes. this game getting a ten for me too. There's just a couple tiny nitpicky things that I would I would change that yeah. are maybe me being a little harsh. But I I don't like giving games ten. So. This game is a 9 out of 10 for Dan from the wow, board game rundown. Sure. That's pretty good, Dan. Nice. Yeah. Game I, so, I know, thanks. That's my last <laughs> name. Specifically, Dan from the board game rundown. Uh, all right, Bobby, what do you got for us? Um, I've been back and forth, uh, and I think because, you know, the, I do enjoy these dual layer player boards. Uh, That's a point, right? It is. Right it, there. it is. It is. Well, it's, 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 it's going to give it the, the half point that I was I was mm-hmm. wavering. On. Oh, I see. And I'm going to give it an eight and a half. Eight nice. and a half. Yep, yep. Because I, I did really enjoy it. Uh, I look forward to trying some of the different people, or maybe yes. trying a different path. You know, and like I wish I would have read the back of my card a little sooner because I was too. so close to like being finished, and then I lost a bunch of the stuff that I needed. Hey guys, <laughs> yeah. sorry to interrupt for a second, but guys, when you first play this game, one of the first sentences is "Don't read the back of the character cards." Oh yeah, right. Yeah, don't read, read them all. Read one paragraph later because it says once you select. Your character read the back of your yeah. player card. So I started <laughs> so reading. Like, no, don't read it. I'm like, oh, okay. So I stopped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then, and I we were kept we were like halfway through the game before we started <laughs> yeah. actually playing well, correctly. Yeah. Right. And I don't want you to go through and look at all of them and know what right. you're looking. And for. I think because we all assumed, oh, well, our destiny will be revealed to us. Right. So I had no idea really what I was trying like, to do. I'm just yeah, ambling talk around. To and be like, read the back of your card, and then you'll get to yeah, do that. Yeah, exactly. And that never came up. And like, oh wait, we were supposed to do that when we started. Yeah. But it did not hinder my enjoyment of the game. Obviously, it did. So you're a little bit. I was a little salty when I realized that I was so close to being able to win and then right, yeah. then not. Yeah. So you're eight and a half. I'm an eight and a half. Yeah, I'm kind of like, I mean, I'm right there with you guys. Uh, this game does a lot of stuff. Like, so a game that is similar in a way, Tainted Grail, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. really heavy on theme and mood. Uh, a little more fiddly, but it's a lot yep. more complex. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, Takes up way more room, too, right? Yes, like, the mythology is amazing, boy. but I would not introduce Tainted Grail to like anybody right. that is a uh, medium to light that's gamer. That's not a dip-your-toe-in kind of game. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> this is kind of a dip-your-toe-in kind of yeah, game, yeah, right? you can play this. Because you just play that opening it's scenario you know, mm-hmm. with, with a few people. I will. I cannot wait to see what the campaign brings to this. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm with Dan. This is a nine because this is this this like this scratches all that tainted grail itch, mm-hmm. right? The I like the lore better in tainted grail, but that's because of his specific sure. mythology. Mm-hmm. But again, the campaign and the world building to see what kind of thing that that brings up, you know, like what right. that how that changes stuff mm. and, and and modifies it, because there's just so many things that we haven't even seen right. and touched. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like a few a few nitpicks about the app. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. and, and, and this, yeah. but those are nitpicks. And once you're aware of them, you're just gonna be ready. And I do worry that, like in a few years, that app, you know, might not be supported. I'm much always, that, so. I'm always worried about that. But Lucky Duck Games, they've got a lot of games that deal with apps. So I'm hoping they've got a division that will be dealing with that, and they'll be. And this for is a while. because app integrated games are becoming more, more common. Mm-hmm. I believe that the support is gonna yeah. stick around a lot longer. Uh, so our three scores together would average out eight point eight. That's pretty good. That's, That's pretty a good. Solid score. I wanted to also mention before we ended, did we mention how much it would help this game if it ran on multiple devices? Oh, def- so, we yeah. talked about it a little if, bit. If you, if you could link it, yeah, we said that it couldn't, but okay. yeah, if you could link it to your own so that you could you then, could scan your own yeah, stuff. That right, would definitely help. I we obviously know you guys probably aren't going to do that because it even says in the rule book runs on one device. So right. that's a big that they obviously it, went into this planning. It might well, they probably just, want somebody like going to different locations. Yeah, right. It's probably things. just a mitigation thing. Right, I can totally see that. 
that. But if you could like maybe just scan it so I can send your camera a photo image, right? Right. And then so you're not trying to hold it up in front of exactly. Else. One of the issues is you hold up your card to scan the QR code, and then everyone else can see the back of your secret destiny right. card. So every, they have to like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. not yeah. look and. And I don't know, just reaching across the table and having to read from that far right. It, well, I could have handed you the iPad, I guess. I get it, but even that, like, it would just be much nicer if it did what other games did, and it ran on multiple devices, all linked to one master yeah. device. You yeah. know, um, sure. Again, nitpicking, nitpicking. but helpful. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that. Yep. No, but uh, yeah, man, Destinies yeah, from Lucky out, Duck man. Games. Was, this is a fun. solid outing. Yeah. If any of this kind of stuff, like, if you're a fan of like Hero Quest or Dragon Strike, this is way better. Yes. Yeah. And cheaper. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it plays in a similar fashion. Mm-hmm. It's more accessible it, uh, to your wallet and just for, like, teaching new people how right. to play. Or lighter. Level. Yeah, lighter lighter to midweight gamers. Like, anybody that's, like, a lightweight gamer that is curious about getting into something that's, like, world building. Like, this is a nice way to, like, ease people into Gloomhaven and things like that, right? <laughs> so you can... You, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. you like your role playing your character and okay, fulfilling you your quest. Yeah, yeah. Like this is where it's at, man. Improve your skills, okay. And the learning curve was so easy. Yeah. So easy. So yeah, man. Uh, this was really good. Yeah. Was, yeah. I'm really excited. I'm we very got happy it. with that yeah. score. I, so. I like it when we have a, like when there's a game like I know nothing about and we unbox it. I'm like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And then you actually play it and you're like, that was actually fun. That was yeah. that was actually <laughs> really good. Yeah. Was are really good. Enjoy so it. so anyways, yeah. Big thumbs up from us over here at Board Game Rundown. Yeah. And for the Board Game Rundown, I've been Tim. I've been Bob. And I've been Dan. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the Board Game Rundown. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Share our videos on social media and spread the word. We publish new content weekly, including reviews, unboxing, and let's plays. And as always, thanks for watching.